Hello, my dear friends. Uh, welcome to my spiritual science series. Uh, this is my second message today for Sunday. Uh, um, the first one was uh, about uh, the church, the Pharisee in the worship, the Pentecostal uh, worship, and the history of where the Pentecostal gospel started from the upper room and then uh, on earth, it appeared in Chicago on Azusa Street, where uh, the mean, uh, meaning of the tongue speaking appeared there. When uh, uh, Reverend Pennon, who was a uh, spiritual father to William J. Sigma, was able to uh, uh, witness the Holy Spirit working through uh, an American girl who was conducting the service. In, and then she began, the Holy Spirit brought a message in Chinese. But then at the end of the day, there's a Chinese lady, a person in the church that interpreted that word, that uh, word that the Holy Spirit sent to the American girl, pure American girl who uh, received the message in Chinese. And she was able to say it. Praise the Lord today. And my second uh, message on this special, very special Sunday today, uh, you know, you every time you hear something from me, you gotta sit tight and, and and stand tight. So I'll be looking at the book of Romans, written by the Apostle Paul, or uh, the the written by the uh, Sydney. Oh, uh, Remy, how are you? How are you, Doc? How are you this morning? Welcome. And uh, the book of Romans, chapter seven, are written by uh, the Apostle uh, uh, Paul. You know. Uh, we will be looking at uh, the internal conflict of man, the internal conflict of man, because we walk in day after day and we struggle with the internal country, uh, conflict, sorry, the internal conflict and, uh, and, and war that's taking place within us. Because as people of God, we got one traditional enemy who is Satan. And Satan is always after the people of God, those who uh, preach the gospel, and he knows who believe in God and who follow him. Satan knows that. So his mission on earth among us is to come and distract us. So he always follow. So Apostle Paul, who uh, all of us know who Paul was prior to his, uh, 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 what they call it, spiritual deliverance from evil and sin and then begin fishers of men but then he was fishing for certain kingdom but when god got ready for him our lord and savior jesus christ arrested him on his way to the damascus where he was going to prosecute christians but god had different mission for paul up to the time Satan was using him. And when God got ready, Satan could not appear. So I come to tell you this morning, before I go into this message, when you know God, Satan will come after you. But when God see beyond your heart and know why you do what you do and know why you speak the way you speak and know why you express the, the compassion that you express every day. God knows it. And he, there will always be a redeemer that will come and help you to stop satanic attack. So this morning, I will be talking my second message for this Sunday on the, the internal conflict of man. The war that is within us. Here, released from the law born to Christ. The law that is born to Christ. Because all of the law that will follow, religious law, spiritual law, whatever we believe in God, everything we preach is born to Christ. So we're looking at Romans chapter 7 verse 1 and 2. Because this is a part 1. I'm going to divide it into two parts because it's something that I want to uh, discuss verse uh, or, or chapter and verse 
four verse for people to understand what Paul is speaking about when it comes to our internal conflict, that conflict that is inside of us. And if we're not careful, if we cannot present it to God based on what we feel, the result come out, the others represent God, or all of represent Satan. Praise the Lord this Sunday morning. Amen. Okay, then uh, uh, verse 1 and 2. Do you know, brothers and sisters, for I am speaking to those who know the laws. You know, I don't want to be tempted to talk about Capitol Hill with issue of law. But we're talking about the scripture here. Where the law coming from before it became secular law for mankind. And we all know how the law is being bushed on Capitol Hill and I shut our country down for a couple of weeks now. But I'm not going there. Let us talk about let me read it again. Do you know, brothers and sisters, for I am speaking to those who know the law. So now we're coming to the law of our law and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that then the bullet point says that the law has authority over someone only as long as the person lives. So which means we as Christians, as long as we live, the law of Christ live with us as long as we still breathing breath on this earth. Praise the Lord today. And then verse 2 says, for example, so verse 2 come to set an example of what I read in the first line. For example, by law, a married woman is born to a husband as long as he lives. Praise the Lord today. So now Paul is taking us to a very familiar example that every man, if you are married or you're not married yet, but if you are married, then you will understand where Paul is coming from with the issue because this chapter 7 has to do with the internal conflict. What caused us to sin? What causing us to have war? What causing to have political wrangling? What causing us family to break up? What causing marriages to break? And who are the conduit of people who contribute towards breakage of marriages? What are the man and the wife and, and, and third party, fourth party, fifth party, up to ten parties? Praise the Lord this hour. For example, verse 2. By law, a married woman is born to a husband as, as long as he lives. So it's saying that as long as, long as you are married as a woman and as long as your husband lives, you are born together. Hmm. This is a serious one. Oh, maybe some people know this voice that why they killed their husband, right? Oh, praise the Lord this morning. I'm not going on a road this morning. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law that bound her to him. So you see, we're looking at the, the law that is applied and the law that become unapplied. So let's read it again. That the law has authority over someone only as long as he lives. The like first one, the law got authority over you while you are breathing breath. Then let's go to verse 2. Verse 2 says, for example, the example of what verse 1 saying about the law and, and whether you live, living or you die. Verse 2, for example, by, the, by law, a married woman is born to a husband as long as he lives. So we we'll go back that the law has authority over someone as long as that person lives. So which means when we die, we're no longer under the law. Because we're dead and gone. We we'll go to the next people, the next Married couples, 
Because the Bible said the example with, with marriage because that's the closest to the heart of God that comes from God, the relationship. Because it started in the Garden of Eden. God didn't intend, intend for what happened in the Garden to take place. But it did happen because God knew there was Satan. Because he's the same God that kicked Satan from heaven after he began to disobey God and kick him on earth. I said to challenge our lives to be able to discern between God and Satan, to distinguish between God and Satan. And this is what they bring this example in the marriage situation and who can be married and who can unmarry along a death come in between. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law that bound her together. So marriage and taking vows is accepting the law. That's why when they putting people in office like those one that who sit on, on Capitol Hill that's that butchering the law, they took oath as representative. They 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 put they took oath to protect the law of the land of Liberia. But here we are. But then we come into how poor begin to explain how sin can cause us to slip off the cliff and fall in the deepest of deepest valley. But the hope here is that when we the law only bound us while we are still together as husband and wife. That husband and wife is referred to men, we Christians in the universe. So as long as we live, we are married to the words of God. And by the time we die, that ends. Because your life that you live before even dying will determine where next you go in. Praise the Lord. This hour. So, so the saying that if the husband dies, she is released from the law. So which means when the husband dies, the woman now, you got a right to go out with another man or get, to get married. But contrary to that, while your husband living and you begin to lay out with another man, it becomes another issue. Praise the Lord today. Then we come to verse 3 that talk about breaking the law. I will put this on the video so that you read and follow. Now, God has set in place, Paul set in place, when the married couple can be married legally. And when that legal arrangement can get broken, it only get broken by death. So as long as it get broken by death, then you no longer honor that law of the husband that you that that oath that you took you and your husband then it means that you're free to be to get married to another man as a woman so let's look at verse 3 it talk about breaking the law that Paul is talking about here praise the lord this morning then it said so then if she has sexual relationship with another man while her husband is still alive she is called an adulterous one, adulterous. So what Paul is saying here that if you have such a relationship or allow another man to lie on top of you while you marry, while the, born, while the husband is still alive, then you go over another man. Then it means that you are called an adulterous person and someone who has committed adultery because marriage and it is vice versa when me vice versa wherever going to the woman they're going to men. but the example is said today we talk about when the man is no longer when death has separated this marriage that's what paul trying to see here because Paul know that while people are married, there's promiscuous activities that take place if they decided to live beyond 
or below the law that bound them together in the church with the pastor marrying them off. Praise the Lord this morning. Then they said, if the husband dies, she is released from the law. Which means when your husband dies, they mean that you, you no longer honor the law of marriage. And is not an adulteress if she marry another man. So which means if your husband which mean that if your husband died, you are allowed to marry to another man. But while he has lived, while he lived, if you begin to lay out to have sexual relationship with another man, then it means that you no longer honor the law. You have broken the law. And nothing but sin that have overpowered you. Whosoever that breaks this law. And it is now a daughter. So you'll be called as a woman. You'll be called as, as a daughter. If she marry another man. While the husband is still alive. Because as long as you marry and he's still alive with me. You're still under the law. But when death come in. Death separate you from the law. Praise the Lord this hour. So I will post this and you read it. So as I conclude this morning on uh, verse 15, I will use because all of the the, the various uh, uh, parts that I will be presenting, I will be con concluding with verse 15. So verse 15 will tell us where we stand in terms of marry, husband stay alive, and marry when the husband dies. So verse 15 says, I do not understand why I do. So now what causing us all of this thing to be married as a woman, you lay all with different men. You marry to a wife, you lay all with different women. I don't want all to feel that Paul is only speaking to the woman here today. You're talking about the law of marriage. The law of marriage applies to the two couples. It does not give one man the right why you married to be living or another woman and why the woman is not there. But now it will come to the conclusion of these three verses today. So what causes us to do all of these things when we go against the law? What causes us when we marry to go against the law? What is it that causing that? So now we'll go back to the team that says, the internal conflict of man. So which be whether you marry or you're not married, as a human being walking day after day, you got in within you an internal conflict that that wrangling inside you. You see someone somebody dressed nice, the nice car, you 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 imagine the coat suit, you imagine the, the, the coat that they wear, the car that they get in. And you think, oh, yeah, oh, my God, some people want to wish to be there. Don't wish. When you see people looking clean, don't wish for them. Wish for yourself. How you dress in the morning, how you're taking care of your home, what you're doing that according to the will of God in your home, that what you focus on. Because when you go and see somebody inside, admiring them, then you get distracted. So that's it. That's what, that what the conclusion is. Three verses saying here. Then what causes you to do that is saying that Paul come on to say that in verse 15, I do not understand what I do. So if a woman leave her house, her husband stay alive and lay out with another man, she is not understanding what she do. And if you, the man, if you do that, you also not understanding what you are doing. For what I do, I do not. For what I want to do, I do not do. Because you know the team say what? The internal conflict. So that verse 15, trying to interpret what is internal, the internal, the inward conflict of man as we walk. You see him looking dressed nicely. You see looking, oh, you see them walking in the park holding hands. But those two people that holding hands are walking there, they got a struggle, an internal struggle in them. That's what caught Paul trying to unpack in chapter 7, verse 1 to 15. So verse 15 is saying, do not understand what I do. Yes, number one, you 
Because when you got internal conflict, when you're struggling inside, between to judging between good and evil, just in between, you marry, but you see a beautiful woman, you want to go after her because you got money. You're sitting with a woman. Women, in fact, most of them, some of them, not even money they go beyond men for. Some of them, they just promiscuous. They get attracted to any other man beside a husband. That's a, a going. So that's part of the internal conf conflict that Paul trying to unpack here to us. That that because we're looking nice, we dress, we go to Sunday, every that Sunday that we go to when they come from there, soon they go, one person go home, the other one go in a different place. Praise the Lord. Then he say, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. So you see, when the conflict is in you, something that two members in your body. One is saying, do be good. My God, hey, be careful. God said you shouldn't do that. Then another one telling you, oh, my man, go ahead and do it, man. I just want to just one time shot. Oh, one time, one time standing. There's all one, one time stand. I hear that was so many in the Western West, West one time stand. Women that were married, they say, oh, I saw the man, I got attracted to him. I had it once. I just did a one less thing. I'll go back to my husband. Paul is saying that dead is sin. They say, but when I hit for, I want to do, I, but for what I want to do, I do not do. You disobeying your spirit now. The spirit tell you don't do it, but still you say you want to do it. But what I hate, I do. The same thing you hate. You say, you see the guy, the guy won't pressurizing you, you want to have sex with you as a woman. You, there's something in you that says, don't do it, you are married. It's against God's will. Don't do it. But there's something, even though, you know, you hate what you want to do, but you find yourself doing what you hate. So what is causing it? It means that we're walking every day, we dress nicely, go to church. But yet, we are suffering from this deadly conflict within our heart because everything good and bad starts from within the heart of man but at the end of the day we will come to the issue of self-control that's why social psychologists came up with self-awareness and self-control those are very two important things for christians self-awareness that self-awareness has to do with knowing who you are as a married man. Not to lay off with another woman that is married or not even married. That self and knowing yourself. To be aware of yourself, that you are you're a pastor, that you're a preacher, you're a good person, you're a minister, you're high up the society. That self-awareness, know who you are. You marry, you got children. You don't want to do things that you don't want your children to do tomorrow. You don't want sin to follow your children tomorrow. Then you find yourself doing things that you don't want to do. That's what. But what I hate, I do. The very thing that you hate, you find yourself doing it. So that's the, that what make it internal conflict. That thing that going on in your heart, people walking, suddenly you walk in and say, that the man walking, so he's just talking to himself. He's just talking to himself. Because it's something that's throwing him. That 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 the inside there, Satan and, and Jesus all arguing inside your body. So they tell you, no, don't go. They say, oh, she's too far. Then you look in her ass. Oh, I bought too far. Then you imagine your hair, how you will be, you know, when she undress herself, how you're going to be playing with that butt. All going to and Satan pumping all that thing in your head. Because he know at the end of the day you're going to come down. He want you down because you're gospel. You're preaching the gospel. God got a plan for Satan. So know who all God want to use. So he knows that what he brings this thing for. And that's why Paul, who experienced finally, Paul had to become one of the greatest evangelists ever to be recorded. Because he wrote about himself. What, where he was before Jesus arrested him. What he was doing. Why is it that God will go after Christians and go and 
kill thousand, two hundred thousand, two thousand, three thousand because you see a church house in a village. You see people going to church, you will slaughter them. What you think causing what inside poor mind tried to him being arrested on the way to Damascus? What you think was happening to the poor? It was if you're not tempted, you'll say a more than internal conflict to go and just look at people and, and, and slaughter them because they're worshiping God. Paul was doing everything to cancel the word of God. But Jesus said, if I redeem this jagas, excuse my expression, because when you decide to go and kill people in the church, you're jackass. You're not nothing as you're an asshole. They were here in the in the in the, in the Western world, it's an easy word. They always say, oh, the pastor, that's all you know. You gotta use it based on what you're saying. If somebody decided to just walk to go say to go kick Christian in the thousand, isn't that person a jackass or an idiot? What who, who are they? I want you to understand what I'm preaching. And there's still no wish man can go against himself. Because when you hit what you do, it means that what you're doing is so bad. And your spirit telling you. But that argument is within your spirit, man. The bumping against each other. Do it, don't do it. 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 Even though the Lord says, so let me remove him. Because we hit him. He rich, he got money. He's clever more than us. He got more opportunity. In this country, we don't have it. If we don't have the money, we'll not get it. As a representative, we don't get it. Our children will suffer tomorrow. We don't have education, even though we got this job. All of these things were running in the minds of the, the one who commits sin against his people and against his family. That what, whenever you sin, God said, go to him. And confess your sin. And when you confess a sin, let it go. Because in your heart, there's two spirit men that they're fighting against the laws of God. Praise the Lord today. Sit there, have a blessed day. And may God bless the family. And may God lead your family and your children and everyone. Pray for me and I pray for you. I hope you enjoy this message and take something from other it. I will post it on a video. Every part that I preach, I will post it so that when you listen to the message, you can go and read to help you absorb it. Because maybe you might not understand my English or the way I speak. You might not understand, but you can read. You can read it. That's why I always put right in my post for people who, because I'm in the Western where I've been struggling with people trying to understand my accent here for years. They try to force me into my tongue. And I'm not a fake man. I don't know how to do fake things. So it gave me a hard time. But anyway, we're getting along. I know. So I just had to speak slowly and pronounce my words with like a retired man. Someone told us or did orientation with King of Canada. So I said, in this country, when you can, you got to talk like a retarded person. He's trying to say how soft is so speak because yeah, we got more, we got oh, we got almost like uh uh 20 uh, 24 percent of the population are seniors, are people between 65 and 100 years old. Okay, so and most of the job for we the immigrant is nursing home. So if you don't know how to speak slowly, you go to nursing home, you're gonna have problems because. They, they're already using hearing aids, some of them don't have it. So if you don't speak clearly, that English, what they knew up to the time they got older, when they hear it, my brother, you just standing there, they will not understand, they just say yes. And maybe you'll be doing the wrong thing at the end of the day, you get into trouble. But so, you know, thank you for listening. Please let us pray, uh, spread the message of God through what I'm doing today, today's Sunday. Uh, you know, uh, decided to come and do this. And I do it every day. I've been doing it since 2020 when COVID came. And uh, I'm still doing it, asking God to, for another level, you know, or to empower me to be, to go to the next level of meeting congregation. Because I'm not telling you what's going to happen the day I stay in front of congregation. There will be no one who will be comfortable in a seat. 
when I stand in for a congregation, the time will come. And I can bet you, when I ascend that pulpit for 15, 20 minutes, you will be uneasy. You will not you, you will not sit on that bench. You ought to be in your feet shouting for God. Or something will be happening in your heart to correct these things that we just talked about. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father. I come this hour to pray against the issues of internal conflict of man. Things that make us to do things that we don't want to do. And yet we find ourselves doing those things. It is... No more the law in us because our distractor Satan is standing between the law and us, merciful Father. Please suppress him as long as we call on you day after day. Let him start disturbing our lives. Let him start putting things in our mind that would not be comfortable before your throne. I just want to pray this hour for those who are going to listen to this video. And my prayers go to the children. If you think you listen to this video and something touches you that need to be changed, let it be changed with the word of God. Pray and ask God for the courage and the spirit to be able to make a change and do the will of God. Thank you. Have a blessed day, God. To God's people. And may us all join together and preach together as we share this video. For someone to listen and then to be able to help themselves. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless. Sydney. Sam Budabon. Can I see you? What's up? I hope all is well. Bye bye.